how are you, Dave? Doing all right. You look great. Well, I, I'm avoiding this uh, unpleasantness out there so far. Yep, we are too. We're being really careful. Uh, so, well, tell me, what's going on with, with you? And, well, let's start at the very beginning. Why don't you tell everybody your name and what instrument you play? Yes, I'm Dick Harris, and I play trumpet. Excellent. Well, tell me, why don't we, how long have you been playing the trumpet? And why oh, did you... Well, I, I started the summer before second grade, which was the summer of 1950. All right. So it's, we've just passed 70 years with, with a gap in there. I played all the way through college, mm -hmm. and then... I didn't play again for just over 20 years. And when my daughter entered high school uh, at Galloway, she joined the Galloway Community Band. They didn't have enough students to have their own band. So they had students and parents and teachers and neighbors and so forth. So I joined that to play with her. She promptly quit and went to play in softball, but I stayed with that um, and have played with that outfit until it was disbanded and then uh, also with the orchestra ever since. Super. So 50 of the 70 years, I guess. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and, and where did you grow up? Outside of uh, Newark, New Jersey in Belleville. When I was entering high school, we moved to Pennsylvania huh. uh, near Lebanon. Right. which is Pennsylvania Dutch country. Yeah. Um, we were in a town uh, in New Jersey and I took some trumpet lessons as a kid. My trumpet teacher was interesting. At least he was interesting to me as a small child because his main music gig was playing trumpet at Minsky's Burlesque down in Newark. <clears throat> and I, take Minsky's burlesque to be more of a vaudeville thing than a girly show, but I, since I never went there, I really don't know. But then when we moved to Pennsylvania, we were a little more out in the country and it would have been a great effort for my parents to get me to a music teacher. So I basically just played from then on without taking any further lessons. Hmm. Did you take lessons later? Nope. I, I took a couple from our first chair of trumpet in, uh, in college. Mm -hmm. He was, he had his own band. He, you know, he was really good, <laughs> but I didn't stick with that. Fantastic. Yeah, it's funny because I can ask people questions that, you know, I maybe partly out of politeness and partly out of time, you know, I wouldn't ask, you know, more personal questions when we rehearse, but, you know, I grew up in New Jersey also. And, uh, it's just interesting to, so, and did you serve in the military? I did. I was, after college, I was in for five years yeah. and thought that would work out, but decided it wasn't going to and went back to graduate school. That's yeah. how I got to Atlanta. Well, what did you do in graduate school? What did you study? <laughs> Industrial engineering at Georgia Tech. Okay, great. And is that the career you pursued? After? Well, it's, it was very useful mathematics. Uh, the focus was on statistics. And my career was in computer, not so much programming as fixing programming, but mm. uh, being a representative for whatever company I was with to their customers, uh, helping get their stuff running, uh, adapting our software, whatever. We weren't designing and creating software in any job I was in. So you, you put out the fires, basically. Yeah, I guess it's not bad. Troubleshooter. Something broke, try to find out what it was, you know. Right. Fix it or coaching or advising on how to get something done, that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, that's, that's fascinating. That's sort of, that's in a way the most interesting thing is to sort of play detective and, you know, figure out what's going on with the software. It's, it's very, yeah, it's solving puzzles to a great extent. It was very interesting in that way. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the technologies were all, you know, relatively new uh, and evolving pretty quickly in those days. Um, and so, you know, there were a lot of, uh, a lot of challenges, I'm sure, in, in figuring out what was going on. Um, yes, and new, th you know, adapting uh, mathematical, I didn't do a whole lot of this, but adapting mathematical papers uh, to the software and much more converting programs that ran on one machine to run on another machine or that ran in one language to run in another language. Yeah. yeah. All manner of conversions from one thing to another. Yeah, not so easy, um, but challenging. I think that's great. Um, yeah, so what about music? Where, where did your love of music start? Well, my parents had a good, although not massive, record collection, which I still have. Mm. Uh, 78 Shellac records, we, uh, I guess a couple of symphonies. Uh, there's a set that has Rubenstein playing one of the piano concertos. Unfortunately, the first record is cracked, so you have to leap in the middle. Uh, got a 78 of UC Burling. Uh, and then we moved on to, I, I can still remember, we had a sharpener for the cactus needles that you put in the tone arm. Right. You could also get steel needles, but then we moved on to sapphire and diamond needles with the vinyl. Yeah. Uh, and then my parents moved on from there to tapes and CDs and pretty much had a tape library, and little tapes, you know, uh, tape cassettes. Right. Uh, by the time they both died in the, in the 90s. Um, We'd listen to WQXR, of course, as it was then. Yeah. Um, watched the, what was it, the Firestone Hour on television. Oh, yeah. So there was a lot of music in the house. My, my mother played the piano. My father had played the guitar, but I never heard him play anything but the harmonica as an adult. <laughs> and he wasn't a real wizard at that. He just enjoyed it. And what kind of music did they enjoy? I mean, obviously some classical. Mostly classical, but, but they had, uh, in that record collection, they had Dixieland, they had, um, which when I told you that's what I enjoyed, you mocked me, so mm -hmm. like that, I got it early. Mm -hmm. um, they had some big band stuff. They had uh, Count Basie, not a whole lot, but some in with those 78s. So it was a mix, but mostly classical. Ah, okay. And what is your preference as far as music? My preference is mostly complex music. Uh, when things moved from big bands to guitars, I was not really happy with it. It was so simple, even though if you had, you know, three guitars, it's still just guitars. Right. And so I somehow, you know, I never uh, was a happy part of that movement. And we uh, continued, my sister and I, I guess, continued to listen to uh, instrumental music with more instruments, more than songs on the 45. She had a small collection of uh, songs on 45s, but we weren't raiding the record store trying to get every new thing. Right, right. So I, I take it orchestral music is sort of the most interesting to you? Orchestral and choral. Mm. Uh, I've, I've been, you know, I, I like opera. I was in times past a guarantor of the Bach Choir of Bethlehem. Now I go up there, we go up about every other year. Of course, this year they didn't perform. Nobody else did either, but uh, my, uh, my wife happily also likes choral music. So we get along on that score. <laughs> That's a good pun too. 
Um, and um, yeah, is that, do you have a favorite composer or a set of composers or a period? Oh, well, I listened to Angela talk about anything Russian. <laughs> and uh, with me, I, I really have to say, I, I don't know exactly how much other Russian there is, but St. Petersburg School, all that heavy orchestral stuff, Borodin and uh, so forth. I, you know, you can hear the first two or three chords and you know it's right. St. Petersburg. Right. Uh, and actually I like Wagner. I don't like his vocal music, but I like his orchestral music. You know, it's, it seems to have, it just, sort of flows from here to there. This whatever the conductor decides is the pace is what you're going to do. And uh, but it's it's gorgeous. But the uh, vocal music to me is it's a little bit like Russian opera, a bunch of basos grumbling to each other. Back to you, wow. you know, again. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, well, speaking of conductors, do you have a favorite conductor? Why, you, of course. <laughs> uh, that was well, well done, well done. Uh, thank you. Yeah. You have a second favorite conductor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't really follow the conductors. I, you know, they're all so good, so much better than I, that <laughs> hearing them is just ridiculous. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, we've we've been we've been lucky, you know, having Lucas down and having Ken Wagner and Charay. What what do you what are your feelings about are the orchestras bringing in soloists or or special? I think it's a great idea. It, it certainly, I don't you know, I haven't done a poll, but it certainly draws an audience. It pushes us to perform to a better standard. Uh, you get little hints from them, as especially Ken talking to the uh, string section. Uh, it's, uh, and, oh goodness sakes, who is the, uh, the, the cello teacher that half the cello section goes to? Oh, Nan, Kimberly. Oh, yeah, right. You know, she, she just is such an ebullient character that everybody goes home happy when we have her. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and we've had you know David Sheps and cello and Charay, and, uh, mm -hmm. and then we had the two singers for the Bernstein. Um, oh, yeah. That was that was really. Fun. They're all they're all assets to the performance. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, <clears throat> obviously, for a small community orchestra, it's difficult to raise money, but I think we've been very successful. And, you know, you've helped a lot in, you know, spearheading some of that fundraising for us. Well, we, we have a very low uh, constant budget, which is a great help. We don't have to raise tens of thousands of dollars. We just have to raise thousands of dollars. It would be nice to have tens and we could afford to bring in ringers and, and pay more soloists and so forth. But uh, we haven't found it necessary. Yeah, yeah. Well, you could raise the conductor's salary. We could, yes. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, speaking of all that. That, that needs to be taken offline. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of all that, I just want to say that um, you and Tom, who is no longer playing with us, he's, he's retired, um, really were the ones who enticed me into the orchestra at a difficult time. And I just wanted to just profusely thank you. And it was oh, just- You're welcome, but I absolutely laid that at Tom's door. And, and his son was apparently the one who knew you. Uh, his, so, daughter, uh, his, his daughter, yeah, yeah. His daughter, okay. Uh, yeah. And, um, but- I was, yeah. Go ahead. Well, I had had the orchestra through Paul's final illness and the one year when we had a substitute, uh, which was rather nerve wracking because we had to keep the substitute sort of on call, active uh, at the 
performances, what Paul still conducted, but we never knew if he was going to just run out of energy. Yeah. You know, we didn't expect him to die instantly, but we thought he might not, might not have the stamina to finish a performance. Right. So this was kind of nervous making and having a healthy, good conductor come in was a, a wonderful boon. I mean, he could just sit back and relax and let you be a conductor. <laughs> yes, and I was young then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> never well, never. Pardon me? That long ago. We were younger then. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that was, uh, what was that, 11 years ago, almost 12 now. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's been a great, a great joy, I have to tell you. It's just been fantastic. And I thank you for all your years on the board and all the work you did and uh, all the work the whole board did. And um, it's, it's really such a friendly orchestra and such a, a friendly group of musicians. Um, not always that way with other ensembles. Uh, I think we're very lucky. No, I don't have a, I don't have a lot of experience. They're just basically two: the Galloway Band and this orchestra, with adult groups. Everything else was with students up through college. Um, so I, I can't really comment on that. Both of those were very congenial. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we've been very lucky. Um, where, where do you see the AMO going in the next set of years? Well, if we get back together, I won't mean if, but if when we get back together, we've got a solid group, uh, I would think we can pick up where we left and possibly, we've got a good venue over there in Decatur. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we can stretch to three concerts instead of two. Uh, we, if we can draw in, uh, we, I don't know that we need more people so much as, you know, principals or uh, perhaps better sections in some sections so that we can do some more challenging music and you don't have to select music to avoid stretching some sections beyond what they can handle. Thinking of myself in particular. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we've really gone and come a long way in the last 10 years. Um, we, oh yeah, we, simply we, having, uh, there were a number of people who did not get along well with our former director. Some of them, uh, the entire flute section, for instance, some of them, left not everybody by any means but i haven't run into anybody who doesn't get along with you oh um, at least at least not publicly you probably have but it wasn't obvious to me really no i i, I actually haven't and um often someone in my position as music director will be told you know i'm not happy with this or i'm not happy with that and in the rare cases where that's happened, it's not been personal. It's actually been, you know, I'd like to you know, try to do this, or I'd like to sit, you know, second chair instead of third, or first instead of second or something. But it's, it's all been incredibly amicable. And, uh, you know, a lot of the musicians will bring an extra copy of the music with them, or, you know, if they know the principal is gonna be out in a small section, like, one of the wind or brass sections they'll bring. If they're sitting second, they'll bring the first part also. I, I just find it quite quite loving and quite quite friendly and, and quite respectful in so many ways. Um, and that makes my job a lot easier. I'm not putting yeah. out personal fires. And, uh, and everybody's just, you know, I know that sometimes when I introduce a new piece, there's a lot of moaning and groaning, but, um, like the Rachmaninoff, you know, Second Symphony. And I think we really pulled it off very well. And, uh, and I think that gives them a sense of pride and accomplishment too. Uh, and so I've, I've been very pleased with that end of it. Um, yeah, is there anything you'd like to see us or hear us play or direction you'd like us to go in? Well, I, we talked about 4A's 
Pavan. My goodness, it's lovely. And it would oh. be great if we could do it. Yeah, it's tough because there's a lot of Baroque music that I would love to play. Thin. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's hard to, you know, have half the orchestra sit out. Um, you know, so yeah. you know, maybe at one point we can do a summer concert of just Baroque music or something. Um, that was, I guess it's an aside. The uh, years ago, 1970, I went to the Bach choir performance and I have a recording from those days. It was probably, it wasn't from the performance I saw, but it was from a, a recording they made within a year or two of that. And then they got a new director who wanted to go back to a more Baroque orchestra. And I have a recording of that and boy, you can tell the difference that it is this is lush orchestral uh, sound behind the choir, sometimes in front of the choir, <laughs> uh, in the first instance. But then the Baroque music, is, you can always pick out the individual instruments sometimes. Yeah. It's a significant difference. And in order to accommodate the, that difference in the sound, a lot of people have to sit silent. Yes, exactly, exactly. And, you know, let's face it, you know, attendance is very good now. Um, but when we have occasionally pieces where, especially some of the brass uh, are not playing for one of the pieces, um, it's, you know, I try and put that towards the end of rehearsal so that, you know, the brass or whoever can go home. But it's, you know, I like keeping everybody there as much as possible. I, I think it's important. We're, we're a unit, we're a family, and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's good to keep us all together. <clears throat> on a steady basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you, what are you doing personally these days? Are you, first of all, are you playing? Are you practicing? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I told my wife I would be honest if you ask that question, and so I'm going to be honest. Uh, <laughs> we're pretty much sharing time between over here where I am now uh, on the farm in Alabama and Highlands, North Carolina, trying to stay out of the crowds in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Atlanta has better medical services, but unfortunately you might need them. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now we're here and Ginny is, my wife for anybody who doesn't know, is driving the nine-year-old to school. Mm. They're on half days and it's about 20 some miles away. So you go over there, you come home, you have 45 minutes or an hour, and then you have to go get her. Right, right. Uh, and my daughter has a two-year-old as well. And so this just ruins her day. So Ginny takes the nine-year-old to school and then spends that period of time in Huntsville and then picks her up and brings her home again but there are only so many errands you can run and she's about to run out of errands. <laughs> right, right. And you know, it's uh, what, what do you do while waiting. Uh, yeah. But it's a great help to my daughter. Please and there are other things we can do here to help them as well. My son-in-law has a bike shop and he is just covered up. You know, you may have seen news stories about how bicycling has taken off because it's outdoors and there's distance and so forth. He can't, he can't get ahead. He's, you know, it, someone brings a bicycle in for repair, it's a two week wait. Wow, wow. Uh, so he's not getting work done around the house and the yard. And the, well, we don't have to do the farm because we have uh, career farmers with their own equipment that farm the cash crops, but they have goats and chickens and a yard and so forth and buildings and he's, hardly able to touch them because the bike shop is just eating him alive. Yeah. This good and bad. Right, exactly. Well, you know, Dick, you could take your granddaughter to and from school and during that hour and a half, you could practice the trumpet. That's a thought. The first part, uh, Jenny doesn't want me to spend that much time together with a child who's in school because she's so concerned about my heart condition. Right. Um, 
I'm less concerned than she because they told me they fixed me. Right. So, yeah. yeah. But you have to not exactly take it with a grain of salt, but you have to realize you have a problem. Yeah. And uh, it could certainly be aggravated by this disease. No, absolutely. It's, it's a frightening period of time. And, uh, you know, with my 99 year old father, you know, we just, we've basically been isolated for six months, you know, uh -huh. um, just being as cautious as we can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, well, I hope you do find some time to do some practicing and, uh, uh, you know, with everybody out of the house, you know, it should be nice and quiet and get some, get some, yeah, whom am I going to disturb? I'm sorry? Who, whom am I going to disturb? Exactly, exactly, nobody. Right. Um, I think we're going to pick up with the same repertoire that we stopped um, when we get back together. And at this point, I don't know, I don't know when that will be. Um, well, oh. I'm, I'm guessing with some uh, backing some information from the public health community, as you can imagine, that we're talking about the spring. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly not by November. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I agree. Even, you know, and even if we're out walking around the streets by November, which I doubt, I don't think that uh, Remen is going to allow us back into the rehearsal venue. Exactly, exactly. No, I, I'm... I would pretty well swear to that. Um, I think it's going to be at least the spring, maybe even the summer. Um, and you know, I you know, there's been a lot of communication, you know, to me with the orchestra, <clears throat> and um, you know, I think they're all on board. You know, God willing, everybody's healthy and, and you know has the time to come back. So I, I think we'll have a good, good resurgence, but we just have to be patient. Um, Mm -hmm. but I'm really looking forward to when we do get back. I really miss it. Um, yeah. Well, let me but, ask you uh, some. Go ahead. I, I may have moved to Alabama by then, but right now that's not the plan. Okay. It's just it's working out so well to be here in Highlands and just touch down in Atlanta to collect mail and see doctors. Yeah. Uh, that we're not exactly sure once we can go back to Atlanta and be out on the street and feel safe. Is that how we're going to play it? Yep. No, I, I understand. Well, I'll let you know. I think a lot of people are going to still be ordering groceries online and, and getting yeah. it delivered. And I think, uh, you know, there's so many, I mean, offices are going to probably change significantly in how they, they, they you know, set themselves up. Um, it's, it's going to be different. Yeah, well, offices, everybody, not everybody, but lots of people talk about how it's working out to work from home. And that's fine if you're working with the people you know, but how do you bring a new person in to join the group remotely? Yeah. You know, it's, it's hard to create a group that way. So I think there will be a lot of going back to the office, although quite possibly not as much as it was before. Yeah, yeah. And certainly, you know, in our situation with the orchestra, it's got to be together in person. So that's got to wait till everybody's comfortable and our rehearsal space hosts the Bream and are comfortable too. Uh, but I've been in touch with them. They've been in touch with me. And, you know, it's, we've been welcome to come back when the time is right. So that's good news. Well, let me ask you, um, what's your favorite sound? <laughs> I heard you asked that of other people and I thought about it and I decided it's pouring water out of a bottle into a glass. Huh. It's just, you know, I'm not, pour, I'm not talking about pouring liquor. It's just that sound of gurgling water or it might be a, you know, it's like a babbling brook noise, but I think of it as something you hear at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. It's just a delightful sound. It is, it is. What is your least favorite sound? least favorite sound, probably screeching metal of some sort or another. Yeah, right. Like when your brakes are wearing out and that little wire hits the disc. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure you've heard this in the other interviews, but, um, you know, assuming there's a heaven, what would you like 
St. Peter to save you as you approach? I took a negative approach to that. What do I want St. Peter not to say to me? I don't want him to say, I, a, a, a priest told me, a prophet is not a person who predicts the future. A prophet is someone who says, you know how you should behave and look at what you're doing, shame on you. I don't want St. Peter to say that to me. There at some point where I have no chance to go back and fix it. <laughs> you did what? <laughs> so almost anything short of that is acceptable. Excellent, I love it, I love it, thank you. Uh, well, we miss you and I miss you and, and the orchestra and I just, I really hope, you know, we can get together again soon. It's, uh, it's nice to connect even virtually, especially one-on-one -on -one like this. And uh, as I said, I'm, I'm really grateful for all the work you've done and all the help and support you've given me too. You're quite welcome and we appreciate all of work that you put in and seeing how much work Dan puts in yes. makes me realize how much work you went through before you had Dan to help. Right, right. exactly. No, Dan is a lifesaver and um, very serious about the music and very uh, dedicated to doing everything correctly. And I'm mm -hmm. really, really grateful to him too. It's changed, it's changed our whole um, actually our whole orchestra, not just the string section, because he works closely with the other principals in the string section and, uh, and with me. And uh, uh -huh. it's a gift. You're absolutely right. It's a real gift. All right. We'll give our best to Ginny, too, and your family. And I certainly will, and to Honora. And thank you. How is she doing, by the way? She's doing much better. Thank you. She's doing much better. Good to hear. Yep. Yep. Wow. Uh, thank you. And uh, let's chat once in a while, off, off the recording. Right, we don't even need the video. That's right. <laughs> all right, you take care. Thank you, Dick, okay. thank you so much. Thank you, appreciate all your work. Thanks.